I meet Philip in a Jerusalem cafe. We are about the same age. He's an illustrator and animator. We both grew up in the city and studied here during one of the most difficult times the city has known. The Second Intifada in the early 2000s came after the collapse of peace talks at Camp David between Israel and the Palestinians. Back then, places like this became war zones, as several Palestinian terror organizations carried out dozens of bombing attacks, sometimes daily. But one incident remains in Philip's mind. December 1st, 2001. Two suicide bombers target Jerusalem, killing 11 people. Philip was at a nearby local bar. The, the explosion itself, we didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, I just felt the entire pub shake. And I ran inside and I saw my friend, uh, a guy that I used to work with. He himself was, cut, was sitting there, staring into space covered in blood, like he was all red. And the uh, first thing I did was, was try to talk to him, try to understand what, what was going on with him. And he looked at me and he was blank. There was nothing in his eyes. But that was not the end of the story, nor its final version. Years after the incident, Philip met his friend who was injured. After talking, he realized that he had completely different accounts of the event. He says, yeah, wow, that was a crazy night, wasn't it? And I asked, what do you remember? And he says, well, I was walking down Yaffa Street and I heard the explosion and I ran inside to help and I helped carry uh, stretches. So what really happened? And how can two people who share the same experience recall two different versions of reality? Eli Zomer, the former president of the European Society of Trauma, tries to explain. Well, it is possible that one of them some, somehow embellished or elaborated or changed the event in order, for example, not to experience the shame of helplessness, of being a victim. According to Professor Zomer, memory distortion often occurs in traumatic incidents, including cases of child abuse. But most of the time, the general picture of the actual event remains in the victim's mind. It starts as a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. But if people continue to change the memory and to repress it or to change it, there is one risk there, that they will not be able to work through the trauma. Many witnesses to the Second Intifada are still haunted by the images. Others may have repressed the memories. People block their own memories just to keep on going. We are mortals. We are destined to die. But if we think about death every day, if we live by it, we're not going, we're not going to be able to exist. As we walk on the streets of Jerusalem, I show him pictures from the event 14 years ago. Today, as then, the city still appears to suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome. What else do you remember from that time? I ask Philip. Forget it, he says. Some memories are better forgotten. <laughs>